Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Nikon TV, where we talk about everything and anything Nikon. Uh, my name's Mark Cruz. I'm uh, here at the Nikon Canada headquarters, and our episode today is going to be talking about gadgets and widgets, all the cool little accessories that um, don't necessarily get the spotlight like the big cameras and lenses do, but uh, are so important to everyone's camera bag to you know enhance your photography or video experience. So that's what we're going to be going through through this episode. But before we do that, we're going to get to the latest in Nikon news. All right, so a couple of weeks ago, guys, we just, within the last uh, week, we just announced a brand new Z lens, Z series lens. This is the latest in the S line series of lenses specifically designed for the Z system. And this is the one that a lot of people have been waiting for. It's already been announced on the roadmap for this year, 2019. We already have three lenses currently in existence that are um, on sale in stores right now. In January, Nikon announced the 14 to 30, and just recently they've announced the brand new 24 to 70, wait for it, 2.8. All right, so this is the one that everybody has been waiting for. You know, the kit lens, uh, the kit lens that comes with the bodies is the 24 to 70 F4, and a lot of people are waiting for that extra stop with the 2.8. This lens has been announced. It's going to be released on April 18th of this year, uh, sales start date. But we have one right here. So I'd like to take a couple of minutes here just to show you some of the features of this brand new 24 to 70 millimeter lens with the 2.8 for the Z series. Now, if you look at the top here, you're gonna see that it has several rings on it. Bottom here, there's one, this is the zoom ring, and this is the manual focus ring. Now I'm just gonna do something real quick here. I'm gonna turn the camera on, and you see this information display light up, and you see there's now an um, information, to pa uh, information panel right there at the top of the lens. It is an electronic information panel. So what happens here is right now I have the display set to focus. So when I adjust my focus, it gives me a distance scale, an electronic distance scale. This is a fly-by-wire lens, so it needs that electronic distance scale. This is the first lens that we've introduced with that. If I toggle the display switch one more time, I can also see my exact millimeter ratings down to the 0.5 of a millimeter. So when you're in these in-between zones here, between 35 and 50, you can see exactly what it is. And then if I touch that one more time, um, this will actually show you uh, my F number. So if I tap that right there, I can use this ring right here to adjust my f-stop. You see it goes down as low as 2.8 and I can bring it all the way up to f22 by adjusting this other ring here at the side of the lens. It is an 82 millimeter filter at the front. It's letting more light in, a whole stop more than the f4. And early results show this is the best, this is the finest piece of glass of 24 to 72.8 Nikon has ever created. It is the sharpest edge to edge. It's also introducing new technologies such as the new Arneo coating that uh, Nikon has introduced with this lens and they've slated that it's gonna be introduced later on this year with the 58 millimeter knocked lens as well. So look forward to that guys and um, that's our Nikon news. All right guys, now um, in addition to that, if you want to learn more about the S-Line series of lenses, and some of you might be wondering, well, I already have the 24 to 70 2.8 in the F mount, or I might have the 24 to 70 2.8 VR in the F mount with the FTZ adapter. Why would I need this new Z mount lens? We're gonna drop a seven minute video and we put it on our YouTube channel. Go check it out if you're on YouTube. Type in Nikon Canada. Uh, subscribe to our channel so you get updates whenever we come out with new videos. But we put in a French and English video for uh, the new S-Line series of lenses and we talk specifically about the new technologies in the 24 to 70 version 2.8 for the S-Line series. Check that out um, on our YouTube channel. Now, I'm also gonna give a shout out to the Z owners in Canada in Canada specifically because our marketing department here in Canada has been hard at work putting together a program for Z owners specifically here in Canada. The way it works 
is if you buy a Z body, whether it be Z6 or Z7 body or kit in Canada, all you gotta do is register on our website and you get exclusive access to, we're gonna be having exclusive content, get togethers, workshops, photo walks for um, those members. But we also give you some uh, introductory uh, package that I'm just gonna show you right now. Um, this is what you get when you become a Z owner here in Canada. You have an exclusive Z owner's bag tag. So you can, you know, put that on your luggage as you're traveling through the airport. We also give you access to two certificates for sensor cleaning at our Nikon Canada headquarters here in Mississauga, Ontario. That's worth $50 plus tax each. So, you know, we're dealing with mirrorless now. You might get dust and uh, dirt on the sensors. We have our professionally trained technicians clean them. You have two certificates built right into here on your introductory Z package for Z Club owners in Canada. And inside, we're also giving you a special Z. All right, I'm just gonna show that to you there. Wallet, okay, this is made out of genuine leather and it has a business card holder. And inside here, perfect pocket size for your XQD card. So there's two XQD card wallet uh, pockets there. All you have to do is find the link on our website, which luckily enough, my friend Crest is going to drop into the comment section of the uh, comment section on Facebook right now. Sorry if you guys are on YouTube watching this, but in our comment section on Facebook, we are going to drop the link for Z Club owners. Now, um, that's Z Club. We're gonna get to the gidgets and widgets now, the main part of this program, and we're gonna start off by talking about something that is really important to a lot of people, especially me. And, oh, actually, before we do that, we're gonna run a little poll here, right? Because uh, we wanna know from you guys, before we start talking about all these cool accessories, what is your uh, accessory that you cannot be without. So we're gonna pop a poll question here on Facebook. Let's get you guys participated, participating in the show a little bit here. And the question is, if you could add one accessory, just one accessory to your kit, what would it be? We got a multiple choice here on the, I think the right hand side. So we're gonna give you, is it a microphone, lens filter, remote trigger, or battery grip? Okay, and tell you what, if it's not one of those four, type it into the comment section. We want to know from you guys, what are the accessories you can't do without for your SLR or your mirrorless camera, whether it's a microphone, lens filter, polarizing filter, remote trigger, battery grip, etc. All right, so speaking of battery grips, that's a good place to start because in my backpack, I actually have a backpack, a full-blown two-strap, not a satchel, not a fanny pack, not a messenger bag, but a full-blown backpack that I don't even have a camera or a lens in. All I have are <laughs> accessories, okay? And um, in those accessories, I keep things such as my battery grip. So um, if you guys have a DSLR from Nikon, D7000 and above, we don't make uh, battery grips for D3000 or 5000 series, but for 7000 and above, typically, we have battery grips. If you guys aren't familiar with what a battery grip is, well, uh, it's so, kind of self-explanatory. You have the option of putting a second battery in the grip, but also for people that are holding the camera, you know, in a traditional landscape orientation, it gives you a better grip of the camera. If you have large hands, it's somewhere where your pinky finger can go. Also, if you're doing a lot of portraiture, so you're holding the camera in a vertical position, you don't put strain on your arm. You actually have remote triggers here on the side as well. So you have a remote shutter release and you have as well as uh, aperture control, uh, shutter control, at the back, if I can just get a view of this here, we have also, um, if you look at the back here, that's your remote control, your multi-selector for your focus points. You have back button autofocus if you want. And some batteries will give you a cartridge for the regular ENEL 15 battery. Some will give uh, cartridges for uh, AA batteries. This one here is the MBD-12. I'm using the D5 battery. So if you have a D5 and a D850, you can utilize those big batteries and get thousands and thousands of shots, okay? So for me, I always keep a grip in my bag, especially for my D850, because when I run time lapses, I love having that extra battery life of the uh, ENEL 18 from the D5. So this is a go-to for me. It's always in my bag, not always on my camera, but I carry it around with me wherever I go. Which brings me to 
our first, we're gonna, this is the first time on Nikon TV, guys. We're on episode 13 now. We gotta do it, we wanna make it fun for you guys. We're gonna do our first ever giveaway, am I right? And actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you on my head here, right? All right, here we go. This right here is an exclusive. I brought this back from CES in Vegas. The Z baseball cap, not the one I'm wearing, okay, but I'm gonna, we're gonna draw uh, one for you guys in the comment section if you participate. So the way this is gonna work, you have to uh, answer this question right. So the first one to get it right, we're gonna send you a Z baseball cap. So here it goes, guys. Um, you have to comment in the comment section, all right, first one to get it, what battery grip, all right, uses, or can use an ENEL4 battery with the BL3 battery door, okay? What battery grip can use the ENEL4 battery with the BL3 end cap? If you answer that correctly, you get a large, extra large size baseball Z cap. All right, so that is grips. Now let's move on to something that's really important for people that are doing video, and that is microphones. I don't know if a lot of you know that Nikon makes a couple of really cool sound, uh, sound capture products for microphones, and one of them is the ME1 microphone. I'm gonna show it right here, all right? Um, the ME1 microphone came out when we started coming out with SLRs that shoot video around the D7000 phase. And um, when we started having microphone inputs, the ME1 was released on the market. This is such a cool product because it doesn't take any batteries, okay? Most microphones, um, they require, you know, some kind of nine volt battery or AA batteries. You don't have to worry. It's powered all through the three and a half, 3.5 millimeter jack here. This is actually also a stereo microphone. So some of the early Nikon SLRs don't record in stereo. This is a stereo microphone. Plus, if you're recording video, what's, the advantage of using a stereo microphone that sits on the, uh, the hot shoe rather than your internal microphone is it won't pick up as much of the sound from the internal focusing elements. If you're using a Nikon DSLR and you're using F lenses, those lenses are typically more noisy than the new S-line lenses. So those may pick up sound if you're using the internal microphone of the camera. The ME1 for about $250 in, camera, uh, in Canada reduces the sound from the lenses, gives you stereo, it's powered through the camera, it has you know a windsock as well as an L-cut feature in here, and that's about 250 bucks. A great option if you're shooting video on your SLR. All right, nice and easy. Now, another one that I'm gonna show you right now is, oh, well, it's in tight here, I'm gonna show you another one, is the MEW1. Not a lot of people know that Nikon came out with this a few years ago. What this is, is a Bluetooth microphone. You see two of them here. The one with the cord attaches to the camera, okay? This other one here will attach to, say, the person that you're interviewing, so they don't have to be so close to the camera. You can shoot them with a portrait lens or a telephoto lens, so they're far away from the camera, but you're still getting sound fed right into the camera because this piece right here is actually a microphone. If you wanna hook it up with a lav mic, say a corded lavalier mic, there are inputs here on the side to punch in, say, a, a lav mic, so you can use this just as the uh, transmitter, and then you can record the sound through a lav mic. You can even uh, monitor your audio through a headphone. Somebody else can monitor it, too. Um, this piece here can also be a microphone, so the piece that's actually attached to the camera, get this, if you're interviewing someone, you can have one on the interviewer and the other one on the interviewee, and you're both getting sound, and they're being fed into the left and right channels of the camera. So this, uh, this is the MEW1, W for water resistant, and this is also about $250 in Canada. So check it out on our website, Nikon Canada. And um, this is uh, great for any of our SLRs that have the 3.5 stereo or, or uh, microphone jack. All right, so that's microphones, folks. Uh, next uh, bit we're gonna talk about is remotes. Now we're gonna go through about six remotes here on how to remote trigger your camera. Um, but if you just wanna research which ones later on are compatible with your specific setup or your camera, we're gonna drop a link in the comment section. Uh, to the category on our Nikon Canada website that talks specifically about remotes. Now, the first remote that I'm gonna show you is a nice, simple one, cheap and cheerful. This is the MLL3. All right, we got a picture up there on the screen. 
It's an infrared remote trigger, very simple. So the idea here is if you're taking group pictures and you wanna be in it, um, if you're taking remote shots with long exposure or you just wanna trigger the camera without physically touching it, you might be taking macro shots, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of our cameras will have the feature to be compatible with the MLL3. Cool thing, it's only 30 bucks. It is requires line of sight, so look at your camera to see where it's compatible, where it's getting the signal from. It might be the front, it might be the back. The sensor might be on the front and back, depending on the model. If you go to our website for the MLL3, there is a tab that says compatible with, so you can find out which cameras are compatible with the MLL3. That's a must have, you know, for 30 bucks, you keep it in your bag, you use it when you need it. Now, if you wanna get a little bit more sophisticated, we also have a corded remote. A lot of people like the reliability of corded remotes. This is one that Nikon makes. It's the MCDC2. Again, check the website for uh, compatibility, but the thing I like about this is if I'm doing a long exposure, nighttime photography, stars at night, and I wanna take those you know, several minute exposures in bulb, I'm gonna show you here um, on the actual remote itself, you know, that's the trigger right there, okay? But if you press it and slide it up, you see it turns orange right there, that's actually locking the shutter up. So if your camera has bulb mode, rather than holding the shutter release down for 30 seconds or five minutes, you just punch this, slide up the release, and the shutter will stay open as long as it's in bulb mode. Just make sure that your camera has the input port for that uh, accessory right there, that remote control port. And again, you can find that out on our website. This is about $33 in camera, uh, Canada. <laughs> Keep messing that up tonight. This is the MCDC2. All right. So moving on, guys, we're going to continue um, with some of the more pro models. Now, if you have a D700, D800, D something that has a 10-pin port, okay? Those uh, require a different remote control if you want to do things wirelessly. And what I have in my hand right now is the ML3, all right? We're gonna show that up on screen, not to be confused with the MLL3. This is actually two parts. And as you can see there, one of the parts will be uh, the receiver on the camera itself. And it plugs in through the 10 pin port, okay? And this is the, um, I'm actually just gonna attach it to a, cam to a camera right here. All right, so you can see. And the cool thing about it is, this receiver right in the front is line of sight. That's the, um, the part that talks to the trigger. Okay, so you see the trigger right there and you see this uh, receiver right there. The cool thing is, is you can turn it around when it's on the hot shoe, okay? You can angle it. So if you wanna trigger the camera, if you wanna trigger it behind the camera, you can trigger it behind the camera or in front or whatever angle you're at, okay? And this simply plugs into the socket at the front of the camera, and that is the 10-pin port, okay? So there's several cameras that are compatible with this. Uh, the product is the ML3, it's about $350. But the cool thing about this is, see this trigger? It doesn't only just trigger the camera, but if you look at the bottom here, you see that tripod socket? The reason that tripod socket is there is because you can actually put the, the trigger on a tripod, and when there is an object that passes that breaks the, the beam between the trigger and the receiver there, it'll actually fire the camera, okay? So you don't actually have to press the trigger. So this is great for wildlife uh, surveillance uh, purposes too. So if something breaks that beam, it triggers the camera. So that's the ML3, guys, and it's a little bit more than your simple um, remote trigger because it has that cool, unique functionality, okay? And that's why it's about, it's a little bit more expensive. It's $350. Again, check our website for uh, compatibility. All right, so next one I'm gonna show you here. We talked about entry-level SLR. We talked about pro-end SLR. What about the Coolpix community? Do we have remote controls for those cameras? Typically in the past, no, but in the recent uh, few months here, we've released a brand new remote control, the MLL7. We're gonna show one up around here right now. And you see there's so many buttons on this. This is our first ever Bluetooth remote control. Now this is compatible with three different models. It started with last year with the P1000. That was a 24 to 3000 millimeter lens. And now it's also compatible with the recently announced B600. Again, another super, super telephoto bridge zoom, as well as 
the new A1000, again, another uh, super telephoto compact zoom. And what I'm gonna show you here is just a couple of features of the remote control. You see, it's not just a simple trigger for your stills. You can also record video too. Again, these super telephoto lenses, they're, they're long, the, the lenses are long. So rather than touching the camera and shaking it, you can remote trigger it with this Bluetooth remote control. Again, you don't have to worry about line of sight because it's Bluetooth. You can also adjust the zoom of the lens. So you can actually extend the focal range of the lens without having to move it. This is great for video. So while you're shooting your video, you can extend the zoom of the lens with those plus and minus buttons back there, as well as do some other functions with, um, with that remote control. So check it out. That's about $70 in Canada. That's the MLL7, and that is our first ever Bluetooth remote control. Again, we dropped the link in the comments section, so check it out on our website. All right, so those are the infrared remotes. Those are our Bluetooth remotes. Now we're gonna talk about radio remotes. For me, this is a must have in my bag because I do a lot of shooting um, through barriers outside, and I also like to use this to remote control other cameras. The first one I'm gonna show you right now is a product called the WR1. We're gonna bring it up on screen right now. A lot of people don't know about this, but it is a high-tech remote control. I'm, gonna sh I'm just gonna give you a few brief things, show you why. I mean, you can look it up on our website, but the distance, the main thing is the distance of this remote, okay, is close to 400 feet. So you can actually trigger your camera almost 400 feet away using the WR1. There's so many advanced features of this remote control too. You can also trigger multiple cameras up to, I believe, 64 different cameras um, with this system, provided that those cameras also have a, another adapter on it, such as the WR10 system, okay? So you could use this as your master, and you can use uh, other cameras using the WR10 radio remotes. You can also use this as a relay. So if you wanted to trigger something further than 400 feet away, you can effectively double that distance by putting this as a relay in between two cameras, and now you can trigger it from 800 feet away. Um, you can even stagger those 64 or 20 or 64 cameras um, all at different times um, after the initial camera goes off. So if you remember the matrix in bullet time, how you could see the different cameras of Keanu Reeves going around in bullet time, basically you can set up the same system with Nikon cameras using the WR1, okay? So check that out on our website. It's a really cool product. Again, reliable radio triggering way better than say, you know, third party products out there like Pocket Wizard or something like that because of all the functionality you can do with your Nikon cameras using the WR1. Now, that is something I have in my bag, but this, uh, I, we did in the polls. And by the way, if you're just joining us now, check out the poll right now. We're asking you at home, what is the one thing in your camera bag you cannot do without, aside from the camera and the lens, we're talking about accessories here. We're giving you multiple choice. It could be, what did we say, uh, Jacob? It could be a microphone. It could be filters. It could be a remote trigger. Uh, it could be a battery grip or a comment in the section below. One thing that I cannot personally do without in my bag, it comes in this little pouch right here. And this is my WR10 kit. And inside are these three components here. I'm gonna bring that up on screen. And these three components are the trigger, that's the WRT10 there at the bottom, the WRA10 over there on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, that's the WRR10, okay? And I'm just gonna show it to you here in my hand. And these components are what basically unearths all the cool technology in the D850, D500, D5, and now the new uh, Z6 and Z7 cameras. This is a radio remote trigger. So all those things I was showing you before with the MLL3, you know, the ML3 remote controls, those are all infrared and they're based on line of sight. The cool thing about these remote controls, they work on radio and um, barriers aren't a problem. Also the distance is significantly longer. These ones go to about 66 feet, okay? But um, uh, if you have it, use it in conjunction with the WR1, you can go further distances than that. Now here, I'm gonna show you a little behind the scenes uh, shot here that shows you what you can do with the system. As I said, you can trigger cameras wirelessly through radio, but you can also trigger the Nikon speed lights. 
So I use the SB5000s just like uh, this is a photographer called Lil Shao, and he triggers his flashes outside via radio through barriers uh, using high speed sync with the D850 using this. So I have several cameras now that use this and to use my SB5000s, we were just doing a shoot today. Uh, this gives us 100% reliability. So that for me, I got to vote. I guess I got to vote later, right? On that thing. Vote for me uh, as uh, <laughs> for, uh, for remotes. I need that in my kit, okay. All right, next thing we're gonna show you right now is just up on screen because I don't actually have physical model right now. And I've been talking about the digital era and all our SLRs and things like that, uh, Coolpix cameras, but I don't want to forget the film users out there because Nikon still makes film cameras. I don't know if you guys know that. I mean, we've created some of the most legendary fil film cameras. One we're creating right, uh, that we still have on the market right now is the F6, but tell you what, if you have an F5, an F100, Check out this product here that Nikon makes. It's called the MV1. It looks like your basic card reader, and it essentially is. It's a compact flash card reader right there, and it plugs into the 10 pin port. And I actually have one right here. I have an F6, okay? This is my F6. And in, in front of the 10 pin port here is, uh, you, you can plug that little adapter in, all right? And that uh, MV1 will allow you to basically read the metadata, okay, the metadata that is stored temporarily on the F6, F5, F100. And, you know, when you're taking pictures, it's not until you develop the film, okay? Like, for those of you at home who have never seen a film camera before, why don't I just show you, look at here. See, you guys, no sensor. <laughs> yeah, that's where the film went, all right? So 35 millimeter film. It takes about, you know, a week to, to get your processing back, maybe, 24 hour service, right, Chris? When you work at <laughs> the one hour processing, all right? And um, it's not until you develop your film do you know where you went right, where you went wrong. Um, but I used to keep a notebook and I kept all my settings stored on my notebook so I can look back at my pictures and see if I was overexposed, underexposed, what my depth of field was. The MV1 will allow you to uh, basically plug into this and download all the metadata for the last several rolls that you took onto an Excel spreadsheet. How cool is that? Okay, so definitely look at that because it's still available if, uh, if you have an F6, F5, or F100. All right, moving on. We're gonna talk about the quality of the light going through your lens and basically to your eye. And a lot of people forget about the eyepiece experience and we're gonna drop a link in the comment section because I'm gonna go through a few different eyepieces here. And you gotta find the right one that fits your particular camera, whether it's a square eyepiece or a circular eyepiece. Wanna make sure you're getting the right ones. So we're gonna drop a link on the category of the eyepieces on the Nikon Canada website. I'll highlight a couple of cool eyepieces you may not know that uh, Nikon has. First one is if you're doing macro work, and I think I have one, uh, well, we'll show it on the screen right now, okay. Uh, oh yeah, here it is, okay. So this is the DR5 or the DR6, depending on what model you have. If you have a circular uh, eyepiece, then you get the DR5. If you have the square eyepiece, then you get the DR6. And the cool thing about this eyepiece right here, I'll show you, is essentially screws onto where your eyepiece normally would be, but you it's a right angle uh, eyepiece. So instead of you know crouching out be behind the, um, viewfinder, if you're getting it in awkward positions and you just want to look down, you can do that with this right angle eyepiece. Plus, if you look underneath here, it's actually a magnifier. So you can go one times or you can even magnify the eyepiece two times. It's really comfortable because it has this suction right, or this rubber eye cup right here at the front. This uh, DR5 goes from $240 to $280. Get the right one for your camera. Again, check out our website. The one I have right now is the DR5. And again, it magnifies your eyepiece and gives you a better experience when you're looking through your viewfinder. Now, speaking of that rubber eye cup right there, a lot of people love this for comfort because the, the eye pieces that usually come with the camera are basically flush against the camera themselves. So if you spend a lot of time you know, in your viewfinder, you're, you might get fatigue in your forehead. So a lot of people get, say, something like the DK19 rubber eye cup. Okay, so it's very similar to what you see here. 
on, uh, well, you see it on screen right there. That's the DK19 rubber eye cup. Um, if you have a circular eyepiece, get that right there. If you have a square eyepiece, you can buy an adapter that allows you to put the DK19 on. Just check it out on our website. Okay, so that's a nice, cheap little option there. It's only $12 for that rubber eye cup. I know a lot of our NPS members, our Nikon professional service members have that DKI cup, typically on their D800s, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so um, next one we're gonna talk about here is the DK17M. So look at our website, there's a lot of different eyepieces. The reason I highlight this one is because it's actually a magnification eyepiece. So it magnifies your image a little bit in the uh, viewfinder so you get to see it a little bit more clearly, a little bit more bigger than what your normal eyepiece is. Now, last one I'll talk about, there's a lot of eyepieces there, but uh, when we came out with the D5, D500, and now the D850, we came out with an eyepiece that has the new fluorine coating right on the eyepiece itself. Uh, it's the DK17F, F for fluorine. So if you have greasy, long eyelashes, I know Amanda, you're listening to this, okay? So, uh, <laughs> and you smear, you know what I'm talking about, okay? You smear that eyepiece, you're basically looking through this blurred image, okay? And um, the DK17F is a fluorine coating, just like on our high-end 24 to 70 2.8 VR lens that basically wicks away moisture and oil and dust, and it makes it extremely easy to clean. We include it in the D850, D5, D, uh, 500, but if you don't have those cameras and you want to get a better eyepiece, geez, okay, this DK17F, it's 40 bucks, okay, in Canada. I would get it just to give me a clearer experience at all times. Okay, so that's eyepieces, guys. Now, um, let's move on to a couple of things that uh, you might not even think about when you get uh, out in the field and you're shooting, say, in the rain, which I sometimes tend to do. Not a lot, but I know there are a lot of people out there that go out in the rain. They might be wildlife photographers, landscape photographers, and they want to be out in the wilderness. There might be moisture, there might be dust, there might be dirt, there might be rain. The most susceptible part of, say, a camera like the D850, okay, which is completely weather sealed. This is weather sealed to Nikon's highest grade. All these buttons, all these dials have weather sealing around them for, uh, in, uh, you know, preventing intrusion from any of the elements. The most susceptible part is right there. That's the hot shoe, okay? That's, that's uh, susceptible, you know, to corrosion and things like that if that gets wet and you don't clean it off. So, you know, in previous cameras, there would be something called the uh, BS-1 and it would clip right there to the front, okay? And that would just kind of protect those contacts there. But little do a lot of people know that Nikon actually makes a more comprehensive rubber uh, stopper for this. So it covers the entire hot shoe area. So that you can literally now take it in more heavy downpour uh, times and you're basically sealing the most susceptible portion of the camera right there. That is the, um, this is the BS-3 actually. I think uh, my, my friend Rob Sturgis out in Vancouver, they get a lot of rain out there. Before he retired, I think this is the last piece that he bought. He worked for Nikon for 30 years. This is his last employee purchase from Nikon. <laughs> BS3 hot shoe cover, okay? I have a couple, okay? Because uh, I have a couple of uh, um, cameras. So whenever I'm not using a flash, I lock it on with that. It's just, you know, 12 bucks, all right? So you get that and use it on any of your hot shoes, all right. So, um, that's on our website too, guys. Now, I talked about hot shoe covers. I'm also gonna talk about, well, since we're talking about outdoor photographers, wildlife photographers, landscape photographers, one thing that I always have in my bag, my backpack full of accessories, is for those times where I am taking landscapes. And that is my favorite 77 millimeter circular polarizing filter. Nikon makes circular polarizing filters for every single lens size that they have. Everything from 52 millimeters all the way from 95 millimeters. Even our super telephoto lenses, there's an option to do drop-in filters with circular polarizers. So check out our website uh, for filters. And if you don't know what a uh, circular polarizing can do for you, if you've used polarized sunglasses, Oakleys or Maui gyms or things like that, you know the way it can, you know, take out uh, glare. So we're gonna show you a couple of examples here. It's basically the same thing. 
if you're taking pictures of water, you know, you can cut through the glare um, and get those landscape images that don't have the reflection in the water. Or if you're just taking landscape shots and you want to have blue, saturated blue skies and vivid greens, then the circular polarizing filter will do that for you. Uh, and there's nothing that can replicate that. There's no filter that can really replicate that. Plus, I keep it in my bag because there's some times where I might be taking a shot of a waterfall and I want to slow down my shutter speed. The circular polarizer effectively reduces your shutter speed by two and a half stops at least. So I almost use it like a neutral density filter at the same time, okay? So that's something that's always in my bag. It doesn't take up a lot of space. They go from about $140, $250, uh, depending on what size you have. All right, so moving on. Since we're talking about outdoorsy types, if you're the outdoorsy type, landscape photographer, etc., etc., but if you're going out, you know, um, in the wilderness, in Canada, we do a lot of portaging and a lot of camping, things like this. Nikon makes these uh, waterproof cameras. Okay, so I have one in my bag, you know, just for those times where, you know, I just want something small, I want something rugged and compact. So I have a W300, it's waterproof to 100 feet in my backpack. But for those times where I'm actually going out and say I'm going on a canoe or a kayak ride or I'm going to the beach or something like that and I'm taking it with me, shoot, even if I go to Great Wolf Lodge and I, I drop it in the water, I don't want it to sink, okay? I know it's waterproof, but I might not be able to access it if it drops, you know, 20 feet down. So what I always carry in my bag too is this little floating strap. So check this out. Uh, it's uh, cheap little accessory here, it's about 20 bucks. And um, this can be used for the W300, if you, even if you have the previous models, AW130, AW120, etc. It's a wrist strap, but it's buoyant enough that it can sustain the weight of a point and shoot camera like the W300. So that's uh, another gadget in, that I keep in my backpack, and that's a buoyant little floating strap. Check out Nikon's website, we have uh, that there for you, okay? Um, while we're on it, a couple of other third-party accessories that I'll mention right now that I do keep in my bag at all times just to keep things like my polarizing filter clean or something like my, uh, my lenses or my eyepieces or um, my um, back of my screen for that matter. And that's something like a lens pen, okay? So this is uh, just a lens pen right here. I'll just show you real quick. And one side of it is like a carbon tip right there. So that's the side that you clean the lens with. Uh, you have another brush on the other side. So you take off the big stuff with the, the brush. The other side is kind of like a carbon base tip and that'll remove fine fingerprints and things like that, okay? Um, and lastly, I gotta show you this because now that I'm using my mirrorless camera a lot, I often find that um, I want to be able to blow off some of the dust and I don't want to use compressed air. So I'll just util utilize this uh, little blower right there. You can get these at your camera stores. I'm just using a syringe here that I got from the uh, pharmacy. Uh, syringe, right Chris? What, uh, syringe anyways. And uh, just blow off the loose dust and stuff like that. So that's a great uh, accessory to, that I just bulb that I just keep in my uh, camera bag. All right. So, uh, we're just gonna hit the last little portion here and we're gonna talk about wireless transmission. So, I keep these in my camera bag a lot, all the time too, if I'm using these particular cameras. We're gonna drop a link in the comment section for wireless transmission accessories. So, most of our cameras, if not practically all of our cameras right now, Coolpix, our Z mirrorless system, our, most of our DSLRs right now, allow you to wirelessly transmit your images, sometimes even movies, right to your smart device, whether it be your tablet, your cell phone, Android, Apple, whatever, whatever. Uh, but for those of you that have a little bit older cameras that came out before our Wi-Fi cameras, uh, you might still be in luck because if you have a D3200, D3300, D7100, D600, etc., check out on our website, you might be able to buy this uh, little accessory here. This is the WU1, WU1A and WU1B. And all you do is you plug it into the side uh, accessory terminal. Check out our website if uh, it's compatible, but essentially it'll give you Wi-Fi function functionality. And you can send your images from your, say, your D3200 
3300 over to your tablet, or you can remote control your camera just like our current models do with the built-in Wi-Fi. Um, but just in case you didn't know, check out our website. Your camera might be compatible with this uh, little Wi-Fi accessory. Now, um, we've talked about Wi-Fi before with a lot of our uh, different uh, cameras, but I'm gonna show you a couple of specialized products right now, okay? And the next one I'm gonna show you here, uh, where is she, oh yeah, right there, is the WT7, okay? So if you have one of, I believe it's four different cameras right now, the D850, the D500, or either the Z6 or Z7. Now, you can, send your images not only to your tablet, okay, but you can also send it to your full-blown computer. So your laptop or your desktop, uh, if it has Wi-Fi in it, uh, using the WT7. So we're gonna show you a little graphic here of where how it plugs into the camera. And it basically goes there at the bottom of the camera. It is powered by an ENEL 15, so you do have to get that battery too. This grip is about uh, $1,200 in Canada. But the cool thing about it is it um, works on all the latest protocols, 802.11, A, B, G, N, and A, C. And um, if you look at the side there, it's powered through this battery. That's the ENEL 15 A or A battery. And um, you look on the side here on the other side, it also has an ethernet port, okay? So if you wanted to tether to your computer rather than USB, you can use the ethernet port or what this thing was made for. This is a wireless transmitter. This is uh, shooting the images uh, to your desktop or laptop through Wi-Fi. And it's doing it through either one of four different protocols. Uh, you have FTP, you have HTTP, you have uh, the just shooting regular to your desktop and another option for our wireless uh, transmitter software, that's the uh, Camera Control Pro 2. And I'll talk about that in a second, but before I do, I'm gonna show you one last one. If you're a D5 owner, okay, we'll show you up on screen. This is the WT6, all right. So the WT6, again, is for our latest flagship camera, that's the D5, and it simply goes onto the side of the camera here, extremely sleek, okay? Um, that's all, there's a terminal right there on the side of the D5. Tell you what, even if you have a D4S or a D4, it also has that accessory terminal for the WT5. This is the WT6 that goes on the D5, okay? And again, this allows you to transmit images as fast as we can get using the 802.11 ABG, N or AC protocols. And that'll allow you to use FTP, HTTP, um, shoot right to your desktop or uh, remote control the camera and all the custom functions in the camera using what I'm going to show you right now our camera control pro 2 software So if you're tethering guys um, Again, this is not necessarily a gadget and widget, but I use this in combination with my wireless transmitter This is camera control pro 2 and it basically allows you to get in all the nitty-gritty menu items of your camera, it's not just a basic trigger, it's not just basic tethering to your laptop, it's full-blown remote control of your laptop, or sorry, of your camera, rather, uh, through your laptop. And that's Camera Control Pro 2, that's Nikon software, and that goes for about $225 uh, in Canada. All right, so that about does it for uh, all, this, all these, my favorite gadgets and widgets here with Nikon. Tell us what your favorite is. Uh, we're gonna show the results of the poll right after we come back from our commercial break and we're gonna take some Q&A from the audience in a second. All right guys, so see you in about uh, 60 seconds. The lens is small and light and it allows me to get close and intimate to the, the people I'm photographing. And in a way it almost allows me to become invisible. My name is Amy Vitali. I'm here in Cape Town, South Africa, shooting this incredible city that is so diverse in its landscape and also the richness of culture. I need my gear to be fast and sharp. Frankly, it just has to handle a lot of abuse because I'm in these extreme landscapes, for example, in the middle of a sandstorm. I've been really impressed because this lens is tack sharp in every situation and at every focal range whether 24 to 70, also when it's wide open, 2.8, sharp. 
If I can only have one lens, this is it for me because it can handle a whole range of situations and it's light and sharp, durable and fast. All right, guys, welcome back. So um, we got a couple of questions from the Facebook audience right now. Again, guys, uh, if you have any questions, we'll take them for the next couple of minutes. The first one here, uh, we have an inbox question from Joe, and his question is, what cameras do the ME1 work with? Okay, so the ME1 was at the beginning of this little presentation here. This is our, micro, our stereo microphone from Nikon, just uh, if you're just joining us. It's, um, our stereo microphone that doesn't even take any batteries. It's powered right through the camera. Um, it's stereo. It has, you know, a wind jacket and things like this. It is compatible with essentially any camera that has a microphone jack, okay? And we've even had a couple of Coolpix cameras in the past. And we now have, uh, yeah, we have Coolpix camera like the P1000 that utilizes this uh, microphone jack. So literally anyone that has a microphone jack, you can use the ME1 with. As a matter of fact, <laughs> You don't have to use it only on Nikon cameras. You can use the ME1 with other cameras as well, as well that have microphone input. Okay, so thank you for that question, Joe. All right, next one's from Nicole. And her question is, when does the new 24 to 70 millimeter S lens ship? Okay, when is the new 24 to 70 millimeter S lens ship? We talked about that at the beginning of the program, and I'm just gonna show it to you right now. I happen to have one. All right, we're at February, what is it today, 20th? Okay, so you're gonna have to wait, I think about two months for this to finally make its way to store shelves here in Canada. This here is gonna ship on April 18th in Canada, and it's gonna go for about $3,000, all right? Uh, like I said, there is a link that we dropped in the comment section that goes over the new technologies of this lens and why it's so advanced, radically advanced for the new Z system. It has the new 82 millimeter front. So if you're at home and you're debating, you might already have a Z6 or a Z7 with the FTZ adapter and you already have your 24 to 70 VR, wondering why would you go with the new 24 to 70 S line lens? Well, check out our video on YouTube. We dropped a link in the comments section and we go through all the cool technologies about that. But in answer to your question, wait a couple of months, April 18th. That'll be the fifth lens we've released for the new Z series and more to come this year because Nikon's already released the roadmap. So bingo, thank you for that question. Now, at the beginning of the segment, we did a little poll here on our Facebook page and I'm just getting the results of that poll. Woo! All right, so the poll question was, if you could add just one accessory to your kit, what would you choose? All right, so 8% said microphone, that's coming in on the fourth. 25% coming in third place said lens filter. Okay, so I have a filter myself, the uh, polarizing filter 77. Again, it's not my top choice, but I see a lot of people, one, one four pick that. Uh, very important if you're a landscape photographer, for sure. Uh, coming in second place was the remote trigger. So a lot of people can't do without the remote triggers. I dig it, I understand where you're coming from. That's for me the number one thing that must be in my bag, the WR10 system here from Nikon, especially if you're using their new cameras. Oh, this makes everything come to life, okay? WR10, but the number one thing hmm, that people couldn't do without if they had to pick one accessory for their kit was battery grip, wow, okay? So uh, cool, whether you have uh, you know the MBD10, MBD11, MBD12, MBD... We never actually made a 13, did we? It went to 14, 15. Is it like the apartment buildings? Like they skip the 13th floor and then uh, it's really the 14th. That's <laughs> that's the cursed floor, right? So which camera used the uh, MBD14? Maybe that was the cursed camera, right? Uh, what was that? Uh, the D600? Ooh. Anyways, uh, so uh, we'll, um, we'll uh, stop there, but I did want to mention to you guys, uh, we did do a giveaway at the beginning of the segment. I, I haven't checked the comment section, so I'm gonna run the, the question one more time for our first giveaway at Nikon TV for a Z series hat. The question was, what battery grip, okay, uses the ENEL 4 battery 
with the BL3 end cap. If you type that in the comment section and you are correct, and you are the first one to say the blah, blah, blah battery grip, we're gonna send you a brand new Z baseball cap. All right, guys, so that was our segment on gadgets and widgets and accessories. Thanks for participating in the comment section, and we will see you next time on Nikon TV. Take care.